Hey there, I'm Alex. Today I want to share something with you that I've been playing with the last few weeks, and that is Depth Crafter. So, you know, there, there's been many, many different models, many releases that can do depth passes, but what they have all been lacking so far has been the temporal consistency. And finally, we have one that actually delivers. So, um, you know, you can you can go here on the website and, and read through it and see some of their examples, but I've, I've done my own and that's what I'm going to be sharing with you today. Uh, so I'm going to be sharing, as always, all the links that I'm going to be showing you, you can just find below. So if you, you want to go ahead and check them out yourself. Um, unfortunately, there is no Nuke implementation as of yet, um, but I would imagine that just like some of the other models have come to Kateri, this seems like a no brainer. Um, so if you're here on the website, just know that there is a Hugging Face demo. So if you if you go to a Hugging Face demo, uh, you'll be greeted with a website that looks blank like this. So you can upload your own video if you want to test it out, or you can actually select one of the of the examples they have here, and it shouldn't error out. There you go. So uh, you can you can test it there if you like. However, as you know, I I like to keep things as local as I can. So I'm going to be doing it through Comfy UI, which is the implementation that I've uh, that I've been testing. So uh, the the nodes themselves are from the A Cats AI uh, repo. So um, again, you'll find uh, the links to uh, all of these below. And then the setup, the the workflow itself is actually pretty straightforward. It's just four nodes, and if you go here under example workflows, right, all you need to do is copy this JSON file. You can either you can either download it or you can just copy it and then just paste it in Comfy UI and then that, that'll be it, right? So it, it'll it'll just pop those nodes for you. If you are already running Comfy UI, you can go into the manager up here and then you can say, uh, you can go into the custom nodes manager and then you can look for a depth crafter and then you can just install it that way. Alternatively, um, the GitHub itself has some installation instructions below, so you can just follow those if you if you prefer to do it that way. Um, something to keep in mind: uh, because of the nature of all these models, everything is VRAM dependent. So the the more VRAM you have, the more resolution you'll be able to spit out, the more frames you'll be able to spit out. Uh, just to give you a bit of my experience, I've been able to render out up to about 120 frames is the most I've, I, I, I was able to, to process without running out of a VRAM, and that's running on, on a 4090, so at a resolution of 1024, right? So I, I was able to, by enabling the model CPU offload, I was able to render uh, 1280p, so not 1280p, so to, um, 1280 resolution on the wide, and but but it just limited me to around 90 frames so uh, you know because i was just testing and i wanted to look at longer clips i just kept it at 1024 and that seemed to do that seemed to always you know pretty stable um the example i have here again is just the workflow that i grabbed from the github page so you can just go ahead and do that and uh you just load the video as you do here you set up the frame rate the, the how many how many frames you want to uh to process which in my case i did 72 for all my examples and then uh all of these uh up, all of these options are uh, explained on the github themselves pretty straightforward stuff and then it'll just spit out the the, the output for you so you can see even with you know complex um with complex, uh, let me say resume here. So even with complex shots like this one, where there's a lot going on in the distance with the, the lamp and the stuff and, and the shelves and him waiting, waving his hands, his hair, everything, and it seems to capture everything really well. Another thing to keep in mind, like I said, because this is VRAM dependent and because I own, you know, I, I, I only have so much locally, you can, however, run this on a cloud solution, right? So if you wanted to rent out an H100 or any other, you know, um, GPU with a lot more VRAM, then you're going to be able to produce a higher resolution and higher frame ranges. Um, so uh, with that uh, in mind, I know that a lot of people uh, tend to use runcomfy.com, so I, I guess that's an option for you if you want to go ahead and test it out there. Uh, I haven't personally, but I know I, I've heard of enough people using it there to good success, so j just know you can do that. A bit of a side note here. For the past few weeks, I've been debating whether I should start a Comfy UI series geared more towards visual effects artists, compositors, uh, you know, that, those kind of artists. I think uh, 
for now, I've been using Comfy UI for long enough that while I don't feel like I'm an expert by any means, I am comfortable enough in at least finding solutions when I run into roadblocks. And uh, just the way I work, I try to document as much as I can while I'm learning something. So I have you know a bunch of notes, a bunch of of my process, my learning process, which maybe would prove beneficial to some of you. Uh, but of course, there's already so much, so many, you know, so many good people covering, uh, like doing really good videos on Comfy UI that I sometimes wonder whether I'm just, you know, whether it even makes sense for me to do one. So if it's something that you're interested in, and this wouldn't be just, you know, the standard Comfy UI uh, tutorial, I guess, yes, in a sense, but more geared for visual effects artists, then let me know, right? You can reach out to me via LinkedIn, just leave a comment below. Um, at this point, I'm just trying to gauge whether there's there's interest just because there's so much Comfy UI uh, content out there. But if it's something you'd be interested in, let me know and, you know, if I, if I hear from enough of you and I, I, I feel like uh, there would be value for some of you, then, you know, by all means, I'll, I'll jump in and I'll, I'll start prepping for that stuff. All right, that's it. <laughs> well, let's continue with the video. So that's the workflow, pretty straightforward. So I'm just going to walk you here through a few examples that I've, I've rendered out myself. Um, and, and what the temporal consistency is kind of the, the, the king here, right? Like it's, it's just a matter of being able to use something that is in motion, whereas before depth anything, you know, I'm I'm a big fan. I was a big fan, uh, but the lack of temporal consistency kind of kills it for you, right? There's only so much you can do, maybe for static shots and stuff like that. Uh, and while yes, you could get creative with it and you could potentially uh, fix a bit of that temporal consistency, just getting it out of the box is just so much nicer. Not only that, but the quality itself is is, is much nicer. Uh, so you can see it takes it takes so many things into account that depth anything didn't. I guess that, that model didn't. Uh, it's still not the best with uh, motion blurred stuff. It does okay, but again, it's it's not you know pixel perfect. And because my generations are at a 1024 uh resolution on the wide then you know there's only so much quality i could uh i could squeeze out of it however i am still you know floored and this is my, my go-to depth generator now like i i don't see why i would go back to to depth anything too unless it's just for a still that i needed to do to uh run inside nuke so i have a, a contact sheet here of the two which is actually a, a, it's pretty interesting to see how um while yes, depth anything v2 was very good when it came out, it's it. I think this is just now the the norm for me. Like I, why would I go back to depth anything two and struggle with the temporal consistency? And you can see even on shots like this one where where the motorcycles, the the hands, it's just flickering all over the place. I'm not sure why that happened with depth anything two. Uh, depth crafter, while not perfect, did a much better job, and you don't have the temporal consistency issues, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cache this for a bit, see if it gets a bit better. All right, so I ended up rendering. Um, it, it was just too much, too many frames to cache. So I think this might be a bit better. So you can see again just the how much better quality we're getting and stuff like you know it depth anything didn't account for stuff like transparency. And I've tested trans transparency quite a few times, and it does such a good job um, at understanding what it's looking at. And then what I was saying, you know, motion blurred stuff isn't the best, right? Uh, I guess this is as good as I would expect for now until something else is figured out. I haven't seen any any um, any other model do do a better job with uh, you know motion blurred images. But you know it's it's still usable. And again, just the fact that it is not flickering like uh, depth anything is is just you know such a big win. Um, you can see that, that this is a good example, right? Like you see depth anything because I was able to run it at a bit of a higher resolution, and and this is not much. I think uh, maybe. Uh, this was a four a four K plate that I ran as HD, just you know, to for for memory, uh, just to keep it within the memory of my my video card, and then Depth Crafter I only ran at 1024, and you can see how how much more detail there is in the depth anything um, in the depth anything result. However, if you were to, if you were able to run at a higher resolution Depth Crafter again in a cloud solution or at a, with with a local uh, GPU that has more than 24 uh, gigs of VRAM, then you know you you could definitely get that kind of stuff but you know it, it's night and day like when you look at the, the comparison um it is yeah it i think it's just the standard now it's the, it's the one to beat until something else comes around that is a bit better uh just know that for these examples i've gone ahead and um 
that, so the, the results, like I showed you before, they're all black and white. I, ju I just got ahead and colored them just so that we can see uh, we can see better uh, the result. Uh, but but this stuff is is, is really interesting to see. Uh, like this is a very tricky shot. Like there's a lot of stuff going on, stuff in front of each other. And if you look at the results, like it's quite quite good. Uh, it looks like it even accounts for the dust that's being kicked up by the horses, so which is quite quite impressive. Um, so definitely, I'd say you know definitely check it out. I I don't see how how I, I would imagine it's just a matter of time that this becomes a catering note. It's just a no-brainer. And uh, the model itself isn't terribly big. And again, it running it at a 1024, um, even at you know 12. 1280 uh, resolution that I, I tested, I was able to do it with a you know high-end consumer-grade uh, GPU, and these models are only going to get more efficient. So you know this is I, I think this is very very promising for for things to come. So I, I hope you go ahead and check it out. Again, I'm going to be leaving links for GitHub, uh, the the paper, and the the comfy notes, all that stuff in the description. So until next time, I'll see you then. Cheers.